Hey everybody, welcome to my channel Original Works. In this video, I'm going to show you how to sculpt this with the Nomad app on the iPad. I also have five tips to share throughout the video that will help with common issues you may encounter while following along today. Next, I will show you how easy it is to send this through Kira and 3D print your file. I have chapters in the timeline and description below if you need to pause or skip the video as well. Okay, let's grab your iPad and let's get sculpting. Now we're in Nomad on the iPad. We're going to go into the scene menu and default the sphere and grab a cylinder. I'm going to go to the top menu and click on the hole option. This is going to turn it into a tube. Then I'm going to go into the scene menu again in just a second and grab another cylinder, squash it down and put it at the bottom and make it a, make it a cup. Here I'm just showing you, you can use a transform tool to move and squeeze and shape these a little bit. I'm going to two finger tap and go back. That way, we, when we put the cylinder in here, it's the same size. It's easier to deal with. Drop this down to the bottom. We're going to go back into the scene menu again and voxel merge. You click both options or you click both objects. And then you go down, click on keep edges sharp and voxel merge, increase the resolution. And then by doing this, you'll turn these two objects into one. And then it also keeps all your edges and hard edges sharp. If you don't do the, um, the keep edges sharp, you'll end up with rounded edges on the, on the surface. In the end, it really wouldn't have mattered on this if I, if I chose to leave the edges round a little bit. It wouldn't have mattered a big deal on this one. Now we're going to grab the trim tool with a lasso. And we're going to trim this thing away at the top and make it look like a, a jagged mouth. And you can see here as the lasso works, you just chop it off. To be able to move your object around in the space, you have to click on the view button when you're in the trim menu. You see here where I'm trying to move and it's actually trying to trim. That's because I didn't click on the view menu. So we'll finish trimming this all off with the lasso. Give it a nice jagged mouth. Okay, looking around at it, that looks good. It's all trimmed up nice and jagged. You can see everything's going to look fairly jagged because I'm trying to use a flatten tool on pretty rough geometry because I haven't increased the resolution much yet. So we're going to go in and increase the resolution in just a second. And you'll see down at the bottom you can grab the wire and the voxel mesh down at the bottom, the bottom menu. And you may notice too that I've swapped everything on my menus. It makes more sense to me to use my left thumb to increase and decrease the size of the brushes. And my right hand, I, I can go over to the menu and grab the different tools. I also like using the wrench and screwdriver icon and put the menu in the rectangle instead of the long line down the side. That way I don't have to scroll through trying to find the tools that I use regularly. I've got two spots highlighted, then I'm going to use the trim tool and the lasso and just cut those off. So since symmetry is on, I can cut one and the other one disappears at the same time. Now here you can see after I've remeshed again that the smooth tool still isn't doing anything. Now I'm going to go in and subdivide this a couple times and we're going to put it at like five and a half million. Now when we go use the flatten tool, it's really going to smooth this out nice.
Now you can see that I've increased the resolution on the mesh. I can go in with the flatten tool and smooth this all out much nicer. Now it's going to look more like a gun line. So you can see here there's a spot in the mesh that I've highlighted. And this is a tip on this. A really easy way to get rid of this is to use the clay tool. So we're going to go in there with a little bit of the clay. And so I'm going to grab the clay tool, put a little over the top, and then smooth it. And we're done. Now here I've highlighted the cube to the front view, and it doesn't really matter too much. I've double tapped on that. Since I'm going to rectangle select mask the entire thing anyway, it doesn't matter too much. But if you had an area where you wanted to just select a certain portion and you want it to be perfectly perpendicular and square, you want to make sure that you down at the bottom menu you don't have perspective clicked on so you're an orthographic. And if you do that, then you're able to get a nice clean line that doesn't have an angle to it. Now I've gone to the regular mask tool, I've clicked on unmask, and I'm just going to go around and clean just a little bit of the masking off the top so I can go in and work the gum line a little bit and put the teeth in. Okay, now I'm going to grab a cone and put it in the scene. I'm going to squeeze it and squash it. Then I go to the menu, go up to the mesh menu, And then where it says parameter, we're going to put that at the three, topology to three. It ends up being a nice round shape that you can work with. All right, now I'm going to place it up into the gum line where I want it. Now the big thing here is make sure you don't validate this yet. You need to mirror the object and then go into the symmetry panel. All right, once you're in the symmetry menu, you can click off the X plane. We're going to work in the Y symmetry. And at this point, you can see that there's, you already have one of the teeth mirrored on the other side. As you drag on the Y plane, you can increase to as many or few teeth as you want in a circle. The trick though, is to make sure that you haven't validated yet. Nomad doesn't support a validated object in radial symmetry, so you have to do this before you validate. You can now validate in the menu if you want, or at the top box, either way. Now you can see here, I've gone back into the scene menu and I clicked on the cone. And when you validate, no matter how many you have in radial symmetry, it's only gonna show one of whatever you validated, unless you separate it. Once you click on separate, you have all your individual meshes you can work with and change. Now here, I'm gonna change the name from, I've double tapped back, went into the cone, and I'm gonna change the name and you'll see once I do this and re-separate, it'll have all the individual ones, but they're all going to say large teeth now. So here's another tip with the gizmo tool. So you can see here with the tooth, the arrows are awkward. I want that blue arrow pointing more towards the center. To do that, go over to the left click on the pivot lock, and then you want to go over and click on the cube where the, where the cube is. You want to click on the cube and double tap that. That puts you in a view because if you don't have it in a strict view, orthographic, then you're going to end up putting your pivot in a hard spot. It's going to be, it won't be with that world axis. It'll be off and then you'll pivot really strange. So this way you can do your, you can adjust your pivot. Just make sure that it doesn't matter which view you pick whichever view you go with. That way you can adjust your object and it's easier to move things. Okay, so here I'm gonna label the small teeth, but then I'm gonna show you one other thing, a real quick tip. If you wanna select a lot of objects, you can just click on one in the checkbox and then slide down and grab a bunch of them all at the same time. All right, so here we're gonna to get to the fun part finally. I got everything blocked in like I want where I'm gonna put it. And the next step is to separate all the teeth again. Now I'm gonna give all the teeth a little bit of different dimension, cut them, chip them, cut them away. You'll see as we go along the video here. Here I'm just going in and grabbing teeth with a clay tool, just adding a little dimension to the teeth. Okay, so here you can see on this tooth, 
I'm working it with a drag tool, but it's dragging it kind of strange because I don't have the tool the same size as the tooth. And if you, if you have an oversized tool like this is at the end of the tooth, you end up dragging it kind of funky because the geometry is so thin and it'll move it kind of weird. And sometimes that's what you want. If you want to make some kind of a flower petal, this works fine. But with this one, we want to make kind of sharp, nasty teeth. So I'll end up, I'm gonna end up going around with a trim tool and cutting these all off anyway. So that really doesn't matter. So you'll see some of them where I'm gonna have real even pulls, some I don't. I just go in with the trim tool and trim them off. Okay, so here you can see I'm grabbing the trim tool. I'm gonna to cut this off. I've got an issue though, because I have the symmetry tab on. So if you're not on the original tooth and you're not in the same symmetry as that original tooth, you're going to end up trying to trim in a weird plane so it's going to do weird things and sometimes that gives you a nice happy accident in this case though i do want to trim exactly where i'm going for so i'm going to turn the symmetry tab off and then trim it properly so here's another one that's the same thing I'm going in with a trim tool and it's showing, saying that there's nothing to trim. It's because I'm once again in the wrong plane. So you have to turn symmetry off again, just to make sure that you're trimming in the right spot. Okay, now I'm gonna speed it up. And you see where I'm just going around the teeth, working them all in visually, taking a cut here and there. And on occasion, you'll see where I grab the wrong tool and back up and do something different. So here again, you can see where I grab the wrong tool. The move tool, I have a really hard alpha on. So I'll grab the drag tool, but you'll see I'll make it the size of the tooth and it makes a nice even pull this time. A little squash and drag and we'll put it in place. And here, here's a spot where I just take one out and move the tooth in place. So just kind of going around now and just adjusting all the teeth, putting them where I want them. I want this thing to look like it's just gonna eat all my brushes and pens I have stuck in here. Now I'm gonna grab the clay tool and go around the base of each tooth. This is gonna give each tooth that look like it's coming through the gum line, like it, like it should. So I'm gonna do this around all the big teeth, all the small teeth and give it a little dimension. When I'm done with that, I'm gonna grab the crease tool and start working around with the clay tool and the crease tool around the base of each tooth, the larger teeth, and give them what looks like a root. Now I'm going to grab the mask tool, click on unmask. I'm going to go through the entire sculpture. I'm going to unmask everything except the bottom and the base and the inside. That way when we sculpt on the outside, it doesn't push and push to the inside of the sculpture. Now I'm in the clay tool and you can see the alpha I have selected is kind of like a round fuzzy ball. Now I'm going to change that to one of the, the groups of dots and it gives me a little bit rougher texture. Changing your alphas on, the, on your brushes is like just grabbing a different brush that has heavier, softer bristles or just has a different effect in the clay. So now that I've finished up with the clay tool and the rough texture, now I'm going to come in with the crease tool. And the crease tool is really cool because it kind of pushes and stretches and pulls the clay all at the same time. That's unlike most of the other tools. So you can see there for just a second, I tried the brush tool with that rough texture and I didn't like it on the mus muscular areas. So I ended up grabbing the crease tool again. And then on the upper ring, I'm just running straight vertical lines. And then on the bottom one, I follow the texture that's already there a little bit and just kind of define it a little more. Once you remesh a couple times, you'll lose detail, so it's better to go in with the crease tool and just kind of punch all that detail back in. Once I'm done with this turn view, 
I'm going to go and grab the mask tool and demask everything. There's no need for any masking anymore. So you can see in here in Cura, I'm in the standard quality. I don't have any special settings. 0.2 millimeter, 20% infill. Now you'll see at the bottom when I drag this into the build plate that it's 10,000% the size of what it was in Nomad. So you have to understand in Nomad, this thing's only a couple millimeters tall and I want this to be about six inches tall. So I'm going to make this about six inches. So I'm going to make it 150 millimeters, which is just under six inches. You can see here it's standard quality, 20% infill, no supports. And I haven't changed anything else. This is just regular Cura settings out of the box. We're going to slice it. I'm going to change the name real quick. I have an Ender Creality 3. If you have one of those, the way those names go in there, if you have anything on the prefix like Cura does, I delete all that. It makes it much easier to read and find in the menu. All right, we're gonna slice it, and this thing did take about that long. It was about 24 hours. It's a pretty big print, six inches tall, so it's a pretty good size. All right, that's done slicing. Reject it. And I'm going to show you a quick time lapse of it going up. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.